So while we wait for news of a goalkeeper, um, which um, I'm assuming will come, uh, we're assuming will come, I guess, uh, there was a couple of names floating around uh, transfer-wise um, this week that I, I just thought, whilst me and you probably don't know an awful lot about them, it was just quite interesting to go over them and uh, and see. So the, the, the name that I heard first of all... Um, that appeared was the one of Lyle uh, Lyle Taylor. I don't know if you saw that one. Did you see that one? Yeah. So Lyle Taylor is the he's at Nottingham Forest, I believe. Yeah. He's from somewhere like Montserrat, uh, I believe. Is his uh, is his the country he represents. He's about thirty three now, um, and there was obviously uh, there was this uh, there was this this sort of rumor that he trained with us last week or was training with us for a week. Um, I don't, did you see that one? Uh, now he's a, from what I understand, he's a forward, sort of in the mould of a sort of you know six foot one, six foot two, got a bit of everything, uh, but obviously he's at Forest and not going to get any luck in certainly at the moment. And they it would you know there was some fans speculating he might be going to Birmingham because he'd been to Birmingham to watch a game at some point. Um, so uh, so yeah, so you saw that one as well, wasn't just me, like. Yeah. Like me, you probably don't know a lot about the player, but what was your what were your thoughts when you saw that? Did that did that feel like that's possible, or did you think, nah, that's too far out there? A player from Forest, why would he drop down? You know, what were you, what was your gut feeling? Yeah, it's one of those to where you know it's not surprising in the aspect that he's a striker and that he plays forward, um, because at this point, you know, and again, I saw over the weekend or this morning that that you know supposedly malls is back in training and those types of things now um hopefully that's that's a great update in 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 that regard but um it's it's one of those to where i'm not surprised because of the position yes um it would be i don't know i like you said matt i heard several people say that he was actually in training with yeah. us yeah yeah um you know for a day or several days yeah. some people said so i guess nothing's outside of the realm of possibility there um especially if if you know palmer is going to be um you know in the uh in the in the cardio room for for a couple of weeks perhaps we'll see what happens there um so i guess the the position isn't necessarily a surprise i I would be a little surprised if he was actually training with us like some have said um but again i feel like at this point i said last week after the space um i can see us signing a striker before the window closes yeah Uh, and i can also see us signing another midfielder um obviously with today's news i mean i can see us very well signing (laughs) Another keeper um, as well, so that wouldn't be a surprise either. The list getting bigger, not smaller. Yes, it um, is. It's weird. Yes, it um, is. So I'll tell you what interested me about something. Something you just said uh, resonated with me. So when a player is in free agent, them training with you in the summer for a week is yep. th- that's the norm. Yeah, you yeah. try a trial list. Uh, generally, they're referred to as. But from my understanding, is that Taylor is actually under contract still at Nottingham Forest. So I'm not sure how Forrest would feel if uh, just pick a player, right? Yeah. Andy Cannon goes and snaps yeah. his leg. Now, you might not want that player, but you might be thinking, well, we can leverage in some way, get, you know, might get a bit of money, might get a bag yeah. of training balls, whatever, you know, I jest, but you get the idea. We might get something yeah. um, for him. So that's the, just thinking about it makes me think that's quite interesting because I don't think I've ever heard of that happening often for a contracted player does that make sense yeah absolutely it does i i I did um i just pulled up that um it said he signed a contract of undisclosed length so i don't know if the length of the contract um was ever actually discussed publicly and that was in 2020 it's three years ago yeah Um, so but he's still showing as a registered player to them so that would imply that he's at least got one more year yeah no he is um interesting you know I mean, did 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 Forrest give him permission? Did they, you know, they may be trying to find him another spot as well and saying, you know, hey, go, uh, you know, yeah. you never know. Go go be a trialist. We'll get you off our books. It'll be a win win for everybody, maybe. Um, but that's why I said I, I just I'd be super surprised if he was actually training with us for a couple of days. Yeah, I just I, I only just dawned on me then thinking about it with him with him being contracted. That was the only reason I uh, that was the only reason that I said that, and it could very well be true, but that would be. Yeah. Uh, that was 
that just throws a bit of a, a, a sticky spanner in the works Absolutely. on that one. But nothing seems to have come from it. It seems to have gone quiet on that. Um, and then uh, a, a, another rumour spouted uh, a little bit later. I can't remember that it was a day or so later. Uh, about another, so another striker. So what we all think we wanted, needed. We, it would appear that there's noises out there about them. Uh, and that was Brandon Hanlon, yeah. who plays for Wickham. Now... That rumor wasn't a um, wasn't a uh, a red passion type rumor or whatever. That came from Pete O'Rourke, yeah. who used to work for Sky, yep. and I know him as the guy who broke the really. I, I mean, I know him from his time at when he was at Sky, uh, but when he 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 was the person that broke the Barnet news. That was the first person that I saw that had put Rex and were interested in Ryan Barnet. Uh, from Soniel. So this guy is, you know, that's his job. He's got either, he's a correspondent for a blog, yeah. Footy Insider. Um, that's his job. Um, he will know people. He'll know agents. It's agents. He'll do favours for agents. He'll do favours for clubs. You know, he'll such and such is available and he'll generate interest and stuff. But that was the other one. But again, um, then all of a sudden, like nothing. Not heard anything since. Yeah. Um, and Wrexham are so good at doing deals at the moment, that could be nothing because we don't want people to know anything. Or it could be nothing because there was nothing in it. Um, so I don't know. What you, what, do you think that's just agent talk? Yeah. What? what you, yeah, what's, that, what's your gut? That one I saw maybe once or twice. And it was just, I mean, within a matter of hours, um, I saw, again, a handful of people possibly say something about it. The Lyle Taylor one is the one that, um is it is it going away uh, i guess um I, I literally just saw somebody post a picture and post something about him yesterday so right the loud taylor one uh, the loud taylor rumor i think has a little more um legs you know, in it yeah a little more legs a little more um substantiated claims there um than than, uh, than the other striker but you know we may yeah. not sign neither we may sign both what do we know? Yeah. What do we know? What do we know, man? And at this at this stage, it, it, with I, a couple of weeks yeah. to go, anything could happen. I think at this stage, we're ten days. I think till the transfer window, anything could go. Uh, yeah. Anything could could happen. Um, so yeah, let's touch on a couple of things that you you talked about before. We talked about uh, as well, John Tunnicliffe. So Tunnicliffe, you might not have seen this on the telly. You, I don't know, but Tunnicliffe uh, was doing some uh, exercises uh, on the pitch on Saturday um, with Macalinden, McFadzine, and somebody else, but I can't remember who it was. Um, there was four of them, and they, they, it's quite common to see this uh, when you're at games. The players who are quite not involved and in, because uh, of fitness or whatever, they will do with just a bit of a bit of sprinting and running and jogging and some exercises. So Tony Cliff was there. It's, the reason I say that is I haven't seen Hayden doing those exercises yet. So yeah. if anybody's going to be back soon, my gut feeling is it's Tony Cliff rather than Hayden again. Um, so that was the uh, that was the interesting one. Uh, and then the other one you touched on was was obviously moles. Um, so. Yeah, I was also, I've sort of seen the same as you, I think, is that Moles is back, not in full first team training, but he's back using our gym, back doing some light training, light work. Um, I I did also hear somebody, I I can't remember whether it was on Twitter or what, I think somebody said they saw him having lunch in the fat ball today. Um, So uh, back back in Rex and perhaps gone to see his mural, um, which is really, really, which is awesome, that, by the way. Yeah. uh, so, you know, I'm not expecting him to play at the weekend. No. But in three or four games' time, I'm sure, for instance, he would love to play some part, i.e. maybe off the bench or something, in that away game at Tranmere. I will tell you what, he will be itching to play in that game. I feel I feel you are correct, my friend. Um, I said originally, you know, when, when it happened, the, the just the, the collision and the injury general, when it came out that he had a punctured lung, you know, what makes the difference there is, is you know, that punctured lung is going to be healed up by now. The issue is going to be the ribs, yes. the mini, the severity, whether it's fractures, whether it's breaks, what have you. Um, originally, I said three or four weeks. And, you know, with the fact that it was multiple fractures and multiple ribs, um, that's what's, you know, going to increase that time horizon and, and increase that length um, that he'll be out a little bit. But 
again, it, it, you know, he, he saw a physician um, over in California before he came back home, before he went back to Wales. So, um, you know, the, the outlook was apparently pretty good and he got good news as, as did the club from the physician. So um, going to be back again, hopefully in, in the next couple of weeks um, ahead of schedule from, from what an injury of that severity would call for. And then um, again, Hayden, we've heard multiple times, he will very likely um, hopefully be back in training this week and potentially be, be ready for Barrow. Um, very, very hopefully. I would love to have a fully fit Aaron Hayden for a season. It was shocking to me when somebody had posted on Twitter that he'd missed 30 games over the last two seasons. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of football to miss. It is. And it at is. key times as well. It's always he's, he's been really unlucky. It's been at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, and we could, uh, you know, he's a threat from set pieces. We don't yeah. seem to be quite the same threat without him at set pieces than we are uh, with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you, when you have a double-digit you know, goal scoring center back that, that can, you know, we, we spent five minutes earlier talking about strikers and, and yeah, yeah. Palmer and water and Victor staff and everything. But, you know, when you've got a, a double digit goal scorer that can be a threat from set pieces and corners and those types of things that can alleviate a lot of concerns. Yeah. Um, off of, off of a striker that, that needs to be a, a 20, 25 goal scoring striker. Um, so again, you're absolutely correct. If we had Hayden for the entirety of a season, um, him and his magic hat uh, can be a, a pretty special player over the entirety of, of a league season. It's interesting because that back line is really big. You know, Boyle and O'Connell are, are absolute monsters. They are, yes, but they that are. Hayden's prodigious leap uh, is, uh, you know, is is our real weapon from them set pieces. Yes. Um, Hopefully we can uh, start spreading those goals around a little bit. Um, all the chat on uh, Matty Virtue seems to have died a death. Yeah. That was the midfielder for yeah. for, a, for five minutes. We were uh, we were we were after him, but couldn't agree a deal or couldn't get it done. Whatever it was, um, and that seems to have died. I've not seen anything else on him. Um, I mean, uh, Manga. Oh, for so half yeah, that's a million. A, for half a million right. pounds. Matthew. Yeah, so that was the other one that that came, wasn't it? The Shimanga mm. one came, Jesus came Christ. and went again. But I haven't, I haven't seen anything for a week or so on that. Have you? I haven't no. I haven't um, well, that was a, that that was an interesting one, Matt. Just because the the fan base was so, um, it was either kind of, you know, you were at this end or at this end. It was okay. Hey, we've got the money. Yeah. Let's see if we can recreate the player that he was at Chesterfield before yeah. the leg injury. And the other half was. You know, we're paying half a million pounds for a striker that hasn't been near himself and his his you know his form since before the injury at Chesterfield. So, um, I I wouldn't mind him as an option. I definitely think half a million pounds is way too much money. Yeah, um, I agree. To, to pay for for you know a player like that at this point that's coming off that type of um, substantial injury. Yeah, and and his form post that that's the yeah. thing for me. That yeah, was the thing. Uh, and then the Armstrong one as well, that's died a death, hasn't it? Again, uh, um, from Harrogate, from Harrogate, supposedly a down tools, but now he's back playing again. And uh, um, uh, and that doesn't seem to, we don't seem to have been able to get, you know, the rumour was that we couldn't agree a fee. We'd offered, they wanted more than Palmer, which is our record fee, yep. um, was, the, was, the, was the, the word on the grapevine, wasn't it? Yes. Um, and he down tools because he wanted to move somewhere, whether it was us or somebody else. Um, but I believe he's back playing now, and uh, you know those moves don't seem to be happening for him as it stands. Yes, um, yes. That, that was another one where I'd seen a couple of people on Twitter say that uh, Armstrong was supposedly already in training uh, at Wrexham and ah, uh, okay, training, right, training with the team and those types of things. So that's why I'm a little hesitant when somebody like Lyle Taylor. <laughs> who was supposed to be currently, uh, or not currently, but was training with the team um, last week, supposedly. I'm, I'm a little hesitant I get it. to believe some things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I get it. Well, I mean, you know, as I say, you know, the uh, this deadline forces your hand because um, obviously uh, you, once we get past this point, we can't register any players yeah. outside of those 22 outfield players over the age of 21 yep. um, until January. Um, and then you have to rejig, you know, if somebody leaves, you bring somebody in, whatever. Yeah. Um, so this will, 
There'll be a few going out, I suspect, might be loans. National League clubs will come and try and loan some and, and what have you. Um, yeah. Some of the players that we don't necessarily uh, necessarily want, but that's yeah. going to force our hands. So it's gonna, we've got an exciting 10 days coming because we're yeah. probably going to have to do a bit of business. We absolutely are. And that's that's the interesting thing. You know, we talk about whether it's the spaces, even the other podcasts, you know, Fearless and Rob Rod Red, you talk about it. The, the you know, I talk about it on the spaces that I do randomly. The, the um, embarrassment of riches, I call it, because we have, you know, we've got somebody like, Bryce Hosanna, who Parky rates very highly because of his length and, and possession skills and ability and pace and those types of things. You know, he could go to a National League club, McAlinden, Fads, uh, Calumet Fads. And um, we, we have several, several guys who we could loan out to National League clubs who they would likely go be starters. Yeah. Um, earn some decent wages. Um, and then, you know, either move on to the next part of their career or get actual game minutes, get a lot more experience than they're getting now um, from not even being on the bench at League Two on a match day and be able to come back to us in the future. So we've got some options. We have some guys that we can loan out. I would yeah. like to see Bryce not go out on loan. He's someone that I think has a lot of potential. Um, I actually, you know, I, I rate him a lot. I, yeah. I like what I see from Bryce. Again, I know you disagree and, and that's fine. I would really, really like to see him get – you know, some cup time and, and trophy matches and things like that at center back just to see what he can do. Completely understand with what we have back there right now, he will likely never see another minute of center back, at least during the league season. Yeah. But he got some minutes there during uh, during the preseason, obviously. So he's got some versatility to him now to where he, winger by nature, has gotten center back minutes in our defense. And uh, I'd be interested to see what Bryce can do going forward. But like you said, we've got some uh, – we've got some – players who we can send out on loan to be able to cut those numbers down a little bit if you know a national league team takes a shot on them yeah yeah there'll be there'll be lots looking for uh who might uh who might not be in parkies 22 yeah absolutely. Um, you know there'll be some of those top sides yeah. will think that you know there'll be upgrades on what they've got um even though we don't necessarily want them now there'll be upgrades on what they've got the, the finances will be the will be what dictates those moves 100%. um well, I, I, other than that, I think we've covered everything. What do you reckon? Have we uh, have we uh, have we put the world to right of the world of Wrexham AFC? I think we've solved all the problems. I think they should pay you a lot of money to make decisions. And um, oh, I'm not sure about that. Again, I know nothing. So, <laughs> you know I more than you know more than most of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that, Matthew. No, I think uh, I think we're good, my friend. I appreciate you having me on. Always a pleasure. Let's do it again soon, buddy. I appreciate you. It's D -d ditching work to come home specifically for this. Obviously, that's yeah. not true. I know yeah, that's not true. <laughs> right, let me stop us, mate.